Hi, my name is Mikkel. I'm a senior software developer at CLC Bio. Today I'd like to talk about our Genomics Workbench and show you a few select features uh, from it. It will be released in May to support the data analysis of next generation sequencing data. This is the Genomics Workbench. What I have here in my workspace is the E. coli genome downloaded from NCBI and the simulated result of a sequencing run on the on, the, on that genome. I want to show you how to pre-process the data and then do a reference assembly of all these reads against uh, the, um, the genome reference. Now the read data may come from the 454, the Selexa, Solid or the Helicos sequencing systems. And because of the huge throughput of the NGS machinery, uh, what you'll often be doing is several experiments on the same run. <coughs> and the common thing to do is to insert tags in the DNA to identify which experiment each read belongs to. So in this list of reads, each one is each read is tagged by a two nucleotide barcode. And before we can, we can do the assembly, we need to sort out this list based on the barcodes. And we also need to remove the linker or adapter part of four nucleotides uh, from each read. So let's pre-process the tag reads. I specify that there's a linker portion or adapter portion of Link 4, that there is a barcode next of two symbols, that can be any symbols, and that the rest of the reads are sequenced proper. So the wizard will now calculate that out of the 57,000 reads, there are two different barcodes are found, and it will now create um, two sequence lists um, for us, one for the barcode GG and one for the barcode CC. And for the E. coli experiment, uh, we want to look at the CC barcode. So let's just rename that to E. coli reads. Right, so what we'll do now is to do reference assembly of the E. coli reads against the E. coli genome reference. And I just apply some default parameters to the assembly algorithm, which is now running. And so what happens now is that um, the reads are aligned against the reference, they're then sorted by alignment start position, and finally the, the copy of the reference is uh, annotated with uh, the differences between the, the reads and the, the reference. And the results of the analysis should be available in a few seconds. There we have it. So this is the, the assembly uh, object. <coughs> it shows the, um, the reference sequence here, annotated with, with the differences. It has a coverage graph. Uh, showing for each uh, position how many reads cover that position and then what we have here are the reads the green ones are the forward reads and the red ones are those that are reversed by the assembly process and so you can scroll through this um, all this data and look at it and inspect the conflicts um, but for many applications this view is, um, is too detailed you would like a more high level view and we can change the side panel settings uh, to show another view of of the uh, assembly, this is let me just just the zoom level. So what we see here is again um, the the reads in green and red now just with a bar instead of instead of the symbols, and now one can inspect larger portions of the of the assembly ob object in um, in at a glance. And we can show this together with the reference sequence. Let me just zoom that in. So that we can have both a both high level overview and, um, and some details from the, from the reference. And what you can do with this um, view setup is that you can um, do a fast visual inspection of whether or not the uh, sequence DNA is functionally different from the from the reference sequence. 
and this is likely to be the case if there are low coverage regions, low coverage regions or regions with zero coverage uh, inside coding uh, regions as as specified by the by the NCBI annotations. <coughs> so let's try to find some low coverage regions. And we see that if we set a threshold of three, so we find just we just find just um, uh, one low coverage region, and it turns out to be a triplet outside of any um, coding regions um, as defined by the C NCBI annotations. And so probably the sequence DNA is functionally uh, identical to the reference. All right, thank you for watching. I hope you liked what you saw. We're still adding features to the workbench and we look forward to release it and to hearing your feedback.